Thanks for joining us here in Windsor for the DSP Leaders World Forum, where I am delighted to be joined by Martin Taylor, Office of the CTO Azure for Operators at Microsoft. Martin, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Martin, you were a panelist here at the DSP Leaders World Forum uh, on a session about the relationship between telcos and public cloud providers. So what was your message? Uh, well, essentially, um, the, our message as Microsoft is um, Azure is here to help operators to both build and operate their networks more efficiently and effectively, but also to help them uh, identify and leverage new revenue opportunities, mainly arising from 5G, and, and edge computing that goes with it. So how advanced are we in realizing this telco cloud vision? Uh, well, I, telcos historically have built their own clouds and have relied entirely on their own internal skill sets to, to stand up clouds, to run network functions on them, to modernize their networks. Um, and I think the experience they've gained uh, in, in doing that over the last decade or so has taught them that Building and maintaining your own cloud is difficult and it's expensive and the industry keeps moving on. So there's always a new generation of technology to master. Um, and it isn't necessarily gaining them anything in terms of improved economics or, uh, you know, new revenue streams. It's just an overhead. Um, so I think the, the way that the conversation between, uh, telcos and hyperscalers has changed over the last couple of years, I think, is, uh, hyperscalers have seen less and less of a, uh, as a threat and more and more as an opportunity to help operators um, and, you know, to, to leverage hyperscale cloud, you know, economies of scale, all the clever platform services that are there. Um, and the telcos can then, you know, they bring their customer base, they bring their understanding of the services, uh, they can build those on top of hyperscale cloud. Um, and as I say, you know, that ultimately results in uh, more efficient, more effective operations and potentially new revenue streams as well. So tell us about that, the new revenue streams. What are the additional markets or solutions or uh, offerings that they can uh, give their market base as a result? Um, well, this is really all about exploiting the, 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 the potential of 5G. Uh, and you know, 5G, unlike previous generations of, of mobile technology, um, has got a ton of extra capability for all sorts of machine to machine and um, uh, Internet of Things use cases. Uh, so, you know, whether it's video analytics or robotic control or um, safety, um, quality assurance inspection, uh, you know, there's just, there are potentially a ton of use cases that leverage 5G's combination of uh, high bandwidth and throughput, low latency and guaranteed quality of service. Um, so, you know, th these are use cases which uh, Microsoft has been very active in, you know, in early generations of networking technology. Uh, we've got a ton of platform capabilities around video analytics and machine learning, artificial intelligence, um, back-end systems for ingesting large streams of data and processing them and so on. Uh, and, you know, what telcos bring is the 5G network, which provides, you know, a new front end, if you like, to those services. And, uh, you know, I think but between, you know, there's a partnership here, right? The telcos have got the, the radio access networks and the, 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 the services that they deliver over those. Um, and then the, you know, the, the higher layer of value add, if you like, the hyperscalers bring that and the application development environments and, and the, e the developer ecosystems and so on. So how big is the opportunity at the moment post COVID uh, for a company like yours to help telcos uh, digitalize and modernize? Uh, the opportunity is, is, is huge. Um, I mean, t telcos, I, I mean, look, I haven't got the numbers at, at my fingertips in terms of billions of dollars a year as a capex, you know, but, but essentially we are, you know, what, what, one of the key things here potentially is instead of telcos investing large amounts of capital in building out private clouds, um, they can instead, you know, move that expenditure to, you know, more of an operations focus. Uh, and leverage the economies of scale of public cloud, at least for some of their network functions, n n not all of them by any means. Um, and I think, you know, it's important to emphasize here that, that, that this is a, it, it's a hybrid cloud world we're talking about. Um, you know, parts of the network have to run on telco premises for all sorts of reasons, but there's a lot of it that can uh, be moved into hyperscale cloud, you know, to the benefit of telcos in terms of operational efficiencies. 
Finally, Martin, since you have attended previous DSP Leaders World Forums, I'd like to uh, know if you've seen conversations evolve over the past years and, and what are they about now? Well, as, as, as I said, the, 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 the dialogue between telcos and hyperscalers has changed enormously. Uh, you know, it, f f if I go back three years or so, very much a, 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 an atmosphere of mutual suspicion, if you like. Um, and you know, that's, that, that really has changed a, a, a great deal. And, you know, just the, the, the openness that telcos have in talking to hyperscalers is, is, is quite dramatic. I think the assumption that telcos have always had, you know, we build and operate our networks because they're the lifeblood of our industry. Um, I think, you know, as clarification has meant that, uh, you know what, they're actually not the, the world's experts in building clouds. And maybe it's time to turn to the world's experts, uh, leverage that expertise, and then build those services uh, on, on top of those clouds. Martin, thank you very much. Pleasure.